Right, I'm going to begin by asking, I mean, I just wondered about your own personal relationship with the, the original books when, when you were a child. Were they ones that you were familiar with, that were read to you? I mean, what's... It would be such a better story if my mother and father had tucked me in and read me Peter Rabbit at night, but they didn't and I never read the books until I was doing the film. So I'm afraid I've got no kind of personal history with uh, Peter Rabbit until about a year and a half ago. But I mean, the, the, the Gleeson family is really repping the British novel nostalgia. I mean, you've got Christopher Robin, yeah. Dad's in Paddington. Yeah. It's, you've got this kind of We're thing going on. We're both in Harry Potter. You're both in Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, we've got it down. We're taking over the children's bookshops. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I'm just wondering in regards to the, the sort of challenges in shooting opposite, well, nothing, I suppose, in yeah. this instance, and how, wh how it actually worked. What were you using as a, as, a, as a means to communicate? I think nothing is a little bit harsh. I think Rose is doing her best in the movie. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> I immediately take that back. That's a bad joke. Um, uh, no, uh, in truth, the, the truth was I, re I looked forward to my days with Rose so much because the days acting opposite nothing are really weirdly tricky. I mean, part like, particularly when you're kind of talking to nothing, that's like, it's the exact opposite of what you're used to doing as an actor, which is kind of taking your cues from the person opposite you. So having to invent those in your head is really complicated. The physical stuff was also very tricky with nothing there, having these big fights with stuff that's not there. And so, um, yeah, the days when I actually got to do acting scenes with Rose Byrne were like the days you're like, oh, thank God, today's a good day. I mean, how, yeah, how different is acting on screen and acting in films like this to, to the kind of craft that I guess you grew up doing? Because I guess a lot of people start sort of drama school and they do theatre mm. and stuff, but as you kind of progress through your career, whether it be Harry Potter or Star Wars or Peter Rabbit, it takes such a different turn, doesn't it? And it's, it becomes almost, in some ways, almost like a different medium. It is a totally different medium, mm. but I've done theatre and I've done television and I've done weird kind of real life reenactments of things and I've done lots of different sorts of things and that's one of the things you like doing is trying different things. Even I was talking to Andy Serkis recently who does lots of great acting Anyway, and but he also does this, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, facial reproduction stuff and all that sort of thing. And he's like, that stuff is amazing as well. I'd, like to, I'd quite like to give that a shot as well. And there's, there's a scene in the movie that a few people are talking about with, to do with blackberries. Uh, I just wonder, oh, yeah. are, you, are you allergic to anything in real life? In real life, mm. I'm lucky enough not to be allergic to anything as far as I know. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I think I'm, I, I got lucky with that one. I mean, oh, I've got hay fever. I've got hay fever, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But did you get it badly on this? I mean, there's a lot of grass. No, I was too... Well, I never knew what was uh, snot and what was sweat because we were filming in Australia and it was desperately hot. So I may or may not have had hay fever over the course of this movie. I mean, I just go back. I mean, there was kind of controversy over that scene, which mm -hmm. I personally thought was a bit ridiculous. But I mean, I'm just wondering, when, when you... When, you're shoot, when you were shooting it, when you're making it, did, was there any, ever anything in the back of your head that went, this could be a scene that could upset people? Or were you quite surprised when, when that sort of came about? Particularly as, I think, as, as Brits, we, we have this kind of mantra where we, we can almost take, ridicule anything and that's kind of, and nothing's kind of safe in that regard. Yeah, that's true, but it's also a kid's movie. I understood the point of view of people who, who felt that it kind of went a little bit far or who felt offended by it. I understand that, but I also know that when we were making it, that was absolutely not the intent. So Sony released a statement saying that they were sorry for the, any offence caused, and I'm, I'm hoping that's the end of it, because it certainly wasn't done with any bad intention. But the scene before that, I think they tried to blow someone up with TNT. So <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just wondering in regards to the things you've got coming up. I mean, you're working on with Lenny again on The Little mm. Stranger, which I'm so excited about. Uh, when can we expect that one, and what can we expect uh, of your character in that? Can you sort of give much away at this stage? Well, it's a novel, so I mean, if you read the novel, you'll get a fair idea about what the film is like and what the tone of the film is. It's kind of psychological thriller, ghost story thing that I think Lenny has done a wonderful job on. I'm not sure when it'll be out. Um, but I adored working on it and I just loved working with Lenny again. So um, I'd imagine it'll be later this year at some point, but I'm not exactly sure when. Yeah, it must be great when you do work with someone, like obviously work, like you did work with, with Lenny on Frank and mm. stuff. I mean, when they are making future films, you must when you've had such a great experience, you must just sit there going, please ask me to come back. <laughs> no, I think if you sit around waiting for people to call, you'll drive yourself mad. And that was a really good lesson from my dad early on, is that you can only work on the stuff that's in front of you. If you get asked to audition, if you get asked to meet, if you get asked to do something, then you can concentrate on it. Sitting at home and hoping, hoping, hoping isn't going to do any good. And so just finally, I mean, obviously you mentioned your dad just there. I mean, do, do, you st do you still seek advice from him and speak to him much about the industry now? I mean, obviously, you know, he's such a kind of a staple in kind of uh, in this kind of industry, particularly over here. I mean, 
yeah, do you, do you still every now and again call him and, and ask advice and stuff, or have you kind of gone beyond that point now? No, I think you anybody who you stand to learn something from, it would be stupid not to seek out their advice. And um, uh, my dad, I totally all the time ask him his opinion on things, like as a person and as an actor. So. Um, yeah, no, of course, I would always ask my dad questions and talk to him about stuff. And that that conversation changing is, as we kind of, uh, as I get older and all the rest of it is part of the joy of the developing relationship, which is kind of really amazing. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. Cheers, thank you. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.